what is going on guys welcome back um, just want to give you um, kind of a walkthrough of how I'm gonna be setting up a 20 gallon long as one of my grow outs so you're gonna kind of see this from start to finish um, obviously I'm gonna show you the tank the tanks already level it's in place um, other than that I haven't done anything yet so uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is grab me a net and I'm going to go ahead and transfer some already well-established uh, beneficial media um, from the uh, substrate bed of one of my African cichlid tanks. And therefore, I'm um, going to use that to help jump the nitrogen cycle. And let's just get to it. And of course, i got to grab me one of my sergeant tank. These are on our website. These are very convenient go right up on a hook here so go ahead and check it out they come in very handy and I'm gonna be removing some stuff straight as I've mentioned in previous videos I do utilize I probably had honestly four inches which is above and beyond um, and the reason I do that and I've had years and years and years of success with doing so is it houses good beneficial bacteria as you guys know as i mentioned before every one of my tanks would honestly be bare bottom if it wasn't for the fact that instead of there's other ways of doing it i mean you can take media bags um you can use lava rock you can use uh, pot scrubbers you can use bio rings um, anything that can house good beneficial bacteria that is porous that has a lot of good surface area and that's what I like about pot, pot scrubbers as I've shown you guys in previous videos the same thing goes true with um, the uh, the substrate bed here in these tanks is I can utilize that to help jump the nitrogen cycle look at and understand the process of the nitrification cycle 101 you should have zero ammonia zero nitrite and at least uh, a portion of nitrate typically most of my tanks I keep between uh, anywhere between 15 and 30 uh, parts per million for the uh, the nitrate so for instance when I showed you guys this tank that I just uploaded this is housing the electric yellow lab African cichlids and this is a 60 gallon uh, which the only difference really between the 60 gallon versus a 55 it is a few inches taller and it was instantly jump start by the fact of using these pot scrubbers so again get back to the basics don't overcomplicate it and you can always use you could even go to your local fish store if you don't have good uh, bio load established or a good media bed or some sort of beneficial bacteria housed and kept somewhere else in one of your other setups is a lot of times if you just go and ask them to take one of their sponge filters wring it out into a fish bag in some water and you can honestly take that home and dump it in your tank that's the only time I would advise that you ever introduce um, someone else's water into your setup I'm talking a brand new jump start of a brand new tank and that is a great way to do it so um, I would still take it slow when you're introducing livestock if you're experienced most likely you're probably already fast forwarding through this video uh, this is for uh, the more uh, beginner aquarists this is for somebody who isn't uh, necessarily familiar with the nitrogen cycle and that's why I want to walk through it with you guys so I'm going to take my net and I'm going to simply remove um, some of the substrate and I'll probably do uh, about an inch of substrate down there in that tank and again that's a 20 long that I just picked up and um, uh, so let's just get to it I'm going to put uh, um, Let's rock and roll. Alright, boom. 
simple as that. See? Look at that. Five, six scoops. And when you bend your net, you get a good net, you can easily um, uh, bend it back into place. So you can use uh, any type of container. I just like using a net. That way, uh, uh, leave the majority of the water in the tank. The next step is we're going to go ahead and add some water. So let's get to it. to use is I use this as an old one gallon uh, just a tea container and then you uh, put holes to perforate the end of it or the bottom of it and that will help um, get rid of a lot of those uh, like micro bubbles and that that build up. All right, I'm going to grab my dechlorinator. As you can see, this is filling up. Always good to be multitasking. Keep an eye on that water, though. <clears throat> Keep an eye on your water. You don't want overflowing, that's for sure. Um, so let me go grab one of my sponge filters. That have some airline tube here, and yeah, gotta grab an extra air pump. It's always good to get one of these containers when you got a fish room. It always comes in handy. Uh, I carry these guys on my website as well. They're awesome. They work great. I'm very picky when it comes to air stones, um, air control valves, gang valves, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you want some good quality ones, go to my website and check it out. Make sure you pick yourself up a shirt when you're there too, and a hand towel. Because you guys will not be disappointed. Also got airline tubing on my website. Um, got a bunch of that, so you can customize whatever length you want. That's 20 cents a foot, I think. So as you can see, it's a little over half the way full. And <clears throat> while that's still filling, let's go ahead and get to. Setting up. These sponge filters come in handy. You can use two of these uh, for like a 20 long. One works good for a 10 or 15 gallon. Um, and uh, I'm only going to use one on these, uh, but uh, you can use two. 
can even add an extra one, then that way you have um, an already established, you know, sponge filter for, you know, another tank. But I'm limited on these, so I got to keep it to the minimum. And they do rise uh, about eight nine inches. So. Let's go ahead and grab the airline tubing right here. And as you can see, it is 20 cents a foot. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut what I need from that. Six foot. Get that out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and postpone what I'm doing here with the airline because, as you can see, it is almost to the top. So let's go back and shut off the water. And just a quick heads up, when you have these Python adapters here, um, <clears throat> before you release it, um, make sure you take the other end out of the water because it will create a back siphon. I like to keep things clean as I go. Go ahead and add that dechlorinator, get that sponge filter into place. See, using prime. Shake up the prime. I'm gonna go ahead and add this is a 20 gallon, so I'm gonna use about a half a cap full. That's all you need. Boom. Get that out of the way. Let's go ahead and get our air pump set up. What's nice about these is um, you don't need an air stone for this particular one. So it's one less thing you have to worry about getting clogged or not functioning properly. So that's what I do like about these. Um, so again, these are on my website and they work great. I have them in several, several of my tanks with no issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up. This would be a no heater tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and Install that right in the center, and uh, the suction on these uh, work phenomenally well. Um, that's one of the issues I've ran into before with <coughs> certain sponge filters that you can hang on the glass, and uh, they don't stick very good. But I've had no issues of mine. Um, feed that line through.
and I like my grabber here. It's removing uh, stone, rock, the core, other various items, so these do work quite well. It works, yay! And as you can see, I run um, enough so I can get my air pump up high out of the way so you don't have to worry about dealing with a drip loop and worrying about water going back into your pump and putting a check valve on and all of that. Sometimes you just can't avoid it, but uh, I carry a lot of that stuff on our website, so go ahead and check it out. I have check valves, air control valves. I got two ways, three ways. I got straights, um, you know, and, and a bunch of different stuff. So, and I can always get new product in. But um, as you can see in that time, 15, 20 minutes, uh, we set up a 20 gallon long. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let this cycle and eventually use it as a grow out tank. And I got a couple more things I need to do to wrap it up. Um, I just used an old extension cord, went ahead and made a, um, a light using the same CFL. Uh, this is a 6500 Kelvin 800 lumens. Um, compact fluorescent and they work phenomenally well especially when you're dealing with uh, low to medium light plants so anyways guys I appreciate you stopping by as always I want you to stay encouraged keep on keeping on happy fishing until next one we'll talk to you